Hi everyone, this is Terry. Today I'd like to talk to you about BES for Dream Edition software and the power packs that can be purchased separately to enhance the features of the software. But before we get started, I'd like to take a moment and thank my sponsor. If you're not familiar with Moore's Sewing Centers, they're located in Southern California. And for those of you who don't have the base BES4 program or the power packs, George Moore has some special one-of-a-kind offers while we're staying at home. I'll let him share the deals with you while I tell you more about the program. So let's get started. The first thing I want to mention is when you open the software, you have an opportunity to go to several sites, and these sites will give you the ability to purchase designs, to visit Brothers Vlog, to attend an event, or to explore free projects. Let's take a quick look to see what those sites look like. The first site is iBroidery.com. This is where you'll find exclusive downloadable embroidery designs for your brother machine. You can choose from categories like Disney, Disney Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, New Designs, Anita Good Designs, Dakota Collectibles. You'll see a feature promotion. You'll also see free designs and projects of the month. Moving over to Brothers Blog and Stitching Social, you'll find articles, news, and projects that have been designed specifically for you by Brother Educators and Ambassadors. So check that out. Moving on to Brother Events, you'll be able to see what upcoming events are in your area. This is where you can apply filters by state and date to see what hands-on events or educators will be in your area. Finally, check out Lettering So Easy for BES4. This is a book authored by Cindy Hogan, Brother Ambassador, who is so knowledgeable about all Brother software. The book is 608 pages covering the base BES4 program, including Power Pack 1 with bonus BES Cloud Basic Instructions. Those people who buy the book will also get a link to a private Facebook group where Cindy has videos and answers questions. So let's move on to the software. Well, let's begin with a quick overview of some basic features to BES4 software and also to the Power Pack. This doesn't cover all the features, and you may notice that my windows differ from yours because I've owned all the Power Packs since they were released at the Brother Convention. You can find BES4 videos on YouTube at Brother Sews, and you can also join Facebook groups that are specific to BES4. A copy of the information that I'm supplying you in this video will be available as a handout on More Sewing Blog, and then it will also be available as a file in my Facebook group, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire. You can create a new design by clicking Create New Design from the Welcome screen. If this screen is closed, go up to the Pace Setter BES Lettering button, and from now on, I'll just call it the, the uh, BES button. Select it and choose New. Now you have a design page on your screen. We want to select a hoop, and I have a 5x7 set up, but I want to show you, you can go into Select Hoops, choose your format, and I want PES because I have Brother Machines, but there are multiple formats available. You can see that in the drop-down. And you will choose the 130 by 180 that's 5x7, and I'll just select OK. Now that I have my hoop on the screen, I want to go to Add Design. From Add Design, there is a drop-down box that includes all of the categories of designs. You will notice that I may have more than you because of my power packs. From the Design category, I want to go down and choose Design BF044, which is the Flamingos. I double clicked on that design and now what I want to do is just to click over in the left hand side of the window in the sequence view so this design is selected. I'm now going to drag this into my hoop 
and I'm going to take the handles in the corner which are proportional and resize this design and shrink it down in size. Once I have it a size that I, I feel will be appropriate because I'm adding lettering, I'll let go. You'll give it a moment so that it can recalculate while it's selected go to arrange and choose center. It is now in the center of the hoop. You could have moved it there manually if you wanted. I'll click off of the design so it's deselected and I want to select one of the colors that's already in the design which is the second row of colors so that I can enter text. So I've selected this hot pink and now what I'll do is go to the home tab and I'll go to text. It remembers the last text that I ch had chosen, but I also want to choose it again, and that's circular text. What I'll do is click on the screen. I now have a circle, and I want to grab the lower circle, the, the circle that you see on the smaller circle, and I'll dial it in in size so that this is going to fit within my hoop. Now I'll go over and I'll select text and I can choose any of the text I want. I want to choose the calligraphy font. So let me locate it. I already have it selected, but you can move up and down using your mouse and I'll select that font. I'll go to the upper text, type the word stay and go to the lower text and choose save. Now there's, uh, there are a lot of things that you can find out about the properties and changing those that is going to be beyond this video. But you will notice that in the properties box, you can change the underlay, the fill, the pull compensation, the size, and so much more. We're going to focus on some, some basics here. I'll choose apply. And now you see I had that text on the screen. If I want to move this a little bit around that circle, I can select that circle on the line, hold down my left mouse, and move it around so that it's in the position that's pleasing to me. And if it's, I see that my letters are running into my design, I can grab the top circle and move it back out and make it larger, but I can also choose the inner circle and move it up as well. So let me do that, and it looks like I need to adjust it just a little bit more so that it will fall inside of my hoop. We're now going to move into creative lettering options and mapping fonts. From your home menu, choose alpha mapping. Mapping fonts is where you buy a font from a third-party digitizer and you want to add it into your software so it creates two files actually and those, what that file does is it assigns the characters that are individual designs in a font you can see some here and those are assigned to the keyboard so that you can type them like you do a regular font. So let me show you how that works. I'll choose new font and the name of this font, I like to use the digitizer's name is DBJJ for designs by Juju. The font name is Sheridy and because this particular company sells them in multiple sizes, I'm going to map the two inch font. So I'll just type two inch. Now I will go ahead and choose OK on the author. I use their name, DBJJ, or I can type Juju because I know what that means. And I leave the spacing and everything else alone. I let the design determine how this is going to be mapped. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to scroll down and locate the capital M on both sides of the pane. And the reason I'm doing that is most software programs will have you reference the capital M as one of the larger letters so that it can be your preferred reference letter and we'll choose yes. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead because of the way this file came in, 
with the capital letters, and you can see the A, uppercase, and lowercase side by side, I can select each of those letters by holding down my left mouse button, and I'm just letting it scroll, and I want to go to the Z. So we'll let it get all the way to the Z, and now that that is selected, I'll choose AAZZ. And what will happen is that the software is assigning those letters in the correct keystroke because of the way they fell. Now, there are going to be some instances where, depending on the type of the font, in the case of this, it's like a, a, a script, and it's also more or less italicized, you're going to have what are called ascenders and descenders. So I'm just grabbing that letter, and I'm moving it down in the baseline and trying to keep it more or less in relationship and height to the other letters around it. You'll notice that the F looks like it probably needs to stay where it is, and the G is okay. But when we get to some of the other letters, the J, for instance, in the capital, in this instance, we need to move it down. This won't be the case all the time with capital letters. It's just, again, how this particular font is digitized. It appears that the P needs to move down a little bit as well. And the Q needs to. And you can go through here and work on the rest of your fonts. What you'll find is if you type a particular font and you don't have it moved in your mapping and you don't have it, uh, you're ascend ascending or descending correctly, you'll be able to spot it. Now you can edit it right at that time and move it to the correct position, but you'll want to come back and edit your font file. And I'll just pick out a few more and we'll continue. So we're going to choose the Y and move it down, the X and the Q. Now you will also I had the opportunity to map your your number, numbers. I can't get that word out. And uh, we'll go ahead and select 0 through 9, and we'll select that and map it. When you get to special characters, because not all font files come with special characters, you can, can map them individually. And to do so, you just select the character, like we'll choose the exclamation, and we'll drag that over. You notice there's also auto, and you can go through that and see how it assigns your letters. And if it gets most of it correct, you can readjust the ones that are wrong. When you're ready, what you want to do is save, or all of your work will be lost. So we'll go ahead and save that, and then I'll show you how we can use this particular font. So we'll close the window. Okay, we're going to choose text from the Home tab. I want it to be a normal font, and I'll click on the window. Now I'll go in and I want to choose a font. You'll notice here are two fonts that I've mapped. They have the, the C beside them. And I'll go ahead and I'll choose the one and a half inch that I had previously mapped. I'll type stay, S-T-A-Y, press enter and type save. I'll leave everything else the same and I'll choose apply. Now you'll notice that it's on the screen, and I'll go ahead and I'll select under Zoom to move it to the center. You'll see that you have some handles in the letters, and you'll see diamonds, and you'll notice what the diamonds do is it allows you to move things in and out. And then you also have a blue box that you can use to move things closer. So I have aligned things like I want it. I might want to move my Y in a little bit closer. But all in all, it looks good. 
you'll see that in some instances, because of the swirls of the letters, that you need to maybe make a few more adjustments than you would for a built-in font. But the nice thing is you're able to use some of these beautiful fonts that you can get from third parties. And to have an idea of what this looks like, let's look at it in a 3D view. I'll go ahead and click off of it so you can see it. And if I want to turn the 3D off, I can do that. If I want to recolor this, what all I have to do is to select it and I can choose another color and I've recolored it to the color that's in the handout. And now we'll go ahead and move on into Word Collage. So now we're going to go in and use some of the tools built into the software. Again, you may see things on my page that you do not have because they are part of the power packs. But we'll go into Word Collage, and in Word Collage, we're going to choose a shape, and we'll choose the cat. Now, there's some features in this window that were added as part of Power Pack 2, and I'll show you those so that you know that those features would not be in the base software. So I'm looking for the cat, and I may have passed it up. Here it is. We'll select it. Now what I want to do is I want to have stitches and I want to choose leave it at with the drake and I'm going to type the word Ethan and Sam and Elena. Now you notice that there's a category two here as well. That is if you have the power pack for the cutting power pack, and we don't have that on the base software. We're not able to see the entire screen here. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just slide my window up so you can see down here at the bottom some of the, the other features that are available. So let's go down to the bottom of the screen by raising the window and you can see generate at the bottom. I need to select generate. So I'll select generate and you'll see that it's generating the text pass down in the lower left hand corner and it's now generating the word collage. It'll we'll give it a moment. You can now see it on the screen. At this point if we move up the window, you can see OK at the bottom of the window. I'll go ahead and select OK, and the design now appears on the screen. Now, if I wanted to, I could select individual letters or parts of this design if I wanted to delete something. Let's say I don't want that SAM right there. I can select it and delete it because I thought it was too close to, to an edge. And I can go through and remove other things as well. But th this is uh, covered in other lessons in the software, and particularly if you go in to your help text. And let me show you that. You can go in to help, and you can select and type a keyword. And we were wanting to know about word collage. And you can look at those topics. If you happen to buy Cindy Hogan's book, she goes into this information in detail.